Network is absolutely free. Just search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube to catch one of your new favorite shows, like the GSM. Hello, everyone, and welcome back into the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Before we get into our third segment of the day, I want to get back to my man, Andre, who left a comment right before we went to break. Everybody who loves Kittle tonight. Is he had a bad against tight ends or something? Well, they aren't necessarily good against them, but I feel like they're always going to find a way to get the football to their weapons against us, San Fran. They always find a way no matter what. I feel like George Kittle, out of all the tight ends who can hurt Seattle, probably is the best one. Only a couple other tight ends can truly threaten us, but I feel like Shanahan has our number and the ways he can scheme up so many different plays for his weapons. And Kittle is a beneficiary of that, as well as Debo right now, to carry this offense. Thank you for that comment. Uh, you're just making me dread this game even more. But we have to roll on in this show. It's what we do. I feel like this next segment is kind of one that will kind of play into this defensive mindset as we get into our final positional rankings of the defenses and special teams that I think you should roster in Week 6. And all four of them, you know, have had up-and-down campaigns to start the year. I feel like all four of these teams, though, have players who can contribute to this team. Some of them you might be mad at me about. You can let me know in the comments. I really don't care. This is my opinion about these defenses. But I just want to present them to you, and you can pick them or not, and just def- I just definitely feel like these are the team, the ones that I, at the top of my head, seeing these matchups, would have rostered going ahead. But let's start off. Not from me, I digress. Let's start with the Raiders defense, the one that a lot of people will probably be mad about going up against the Cardinals, who we know I kind of have a love-hate relationship with. I love them when their offense is on fire, and I hate them when I can't seem to get going. And so, this week and this game actually is going to be one that feels as if... I might have gotten this game wrong as well. I feel like this is one of those weird games where I feel like the Cardinals offense will not show up as Andre says they can and find the end zone tonight. I feel like, you know, K-9 is always going to have a say in this game, whether it be through only 5 or 100 carries. As he also said, amazing touchdown with the picks you gave me as well. Thanks, bro. I feel like K-9, he's always going to be a weapon in the red zone. It's just a matter of if Seattle uses him or not. That's all I can say. I feel like you're making me want to dread this game even more. I'm getting very nervous about how we're going to look tonight, but I just hope that we find the right game plan to get us going and at least make this a close game, if not try and win it at the end of the day. But going back to the defensive side of things, the Raiders, it just feels like a weird game where the Cardinals will either play hot or cold. We never know what them, and so any defense that goes up against them has to feel like if, you know, early on they can dictate the play, they can set the edge. They can win. The Raiders will do exactly that. They had 11 fantasy points on one interception, one uh, fumble recovery, and three sacks against L.A. And they just feel like a team where... Actually, I am talking about the Packers. I don't know why I said the graphic where I put the Raiders in it. But that is the game this week. I'm sorry for misleading you a little bit. But it is the Packers. I kind of got confused and put the Raiders. I don't know why. The Raiders' defense... Is not one that I would feel confident in this week. It is the Packers. So, forget what I just said. The Packers, though, are a defense, like I said, who are very opportunistic at that. So, it should be the Packers up there. I'm sorry for the misleading graphic. But then we go into a defense they actually have the right picture for. The Chargers defense, going up against the Broncos. You could definitely say, these past couple of weeks, it's the Broncos defense that a lot of people should be choosing and rostering for their fantasy squads. But the reason why I say the Chargers defense, even with all the injury questions they have, Joey Bosa not playing to full health, you know, and this defense never really having all the pieces together, it's one of those defenses that, to me, will find out their identity 
through consistent play against teams like the Broncos. Against teams like the Broncos, the Chargers will look very successful just because this identity that Jim Harbaugh is building is very physical. I just don't think the Broncos offensively are a very physical team that will challenge the Chargers that much. On the other side of the ball is a different story, and I think this will be a very low-scoring game. But at the end of the day, I just feel like there's nothing that really scares me of Denver's offense at the moment. Both of these teams are going to try to win this game through the defensive side of the ball. There's no question about it. It's just going to be a matter of which defense to me right now is further along. And I feel like actually right now is the Chargers. Because the Broncos, we've seen this kind of movie before. Where their defense looks really good, but they can also have stinkers. I'm not saying that this will be a stinker for them. But I just feel like this game will be so low scoring that it won't matter which defense you choose in it. And I'm picking the Chargers. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments about this game because it's a weird one. But let's move on. The Steelers defense going up against the Raiders. This is the actual game where the Raiders are involved. But I think the Steelers defense will make them look silly. Because the Raiders offense right now is just one big question mark. Whether or not, you know, Devontae Adams is leaving and whether or not it's going to be anytime soon. I think it will be. I think it's going to be a goner sometime next week. And the Steelers' defense will kind of prey on that tension and have perhaps one of their better games this season. And not for nothing, they play very well against the Dallas D uh, team that, you know, wanted to have a get-right game, but looked pretty ineffective in that game. Yes, there were some inclement weather conditions before the game, and it might have affected their game script, but overall... Steelers did a good job in limiting what the Cowboys could do offensively. They had two interceptions, one fumble recovery, two sacks, only seven fantasy points. But this week, we're going to see that point total go up. There's a Raiders defense that, I mean, the Raiders offense that really isn't answering a lot of questions at the current moment and might have more questions to answer after, you know, two weeks' time or so. But we're talking about the Steelers here and talking about perhaps the best defense in the NFL, what they've done over the past couple of games, keeping the Steelers team competitive. And... Going forward, they will be the kind of bell cow of this team, carrying this team on their shoulders to victories like this against opponents that are very manageable. And that's what's going to have to happen, playing their best football against easy, quote-unquote, easy teams to beat. And the last defense I want to talk about before we head into our break, the Bengals. And this one looks very silly, I know, because the Bengals look like perhaps the worst defense in the NFL. And it wouldn't shock me if, you know, they look like it again against the Giants. But the thing about the Giants offensively is that, yes, they played well against Seattle, but how much of that was sustainable and can be carried over week after week? It was very impressive that they did it without Malik Neighbors as well, but I just feel like there's no rhyme or reason week in, week out where we actually can truly gauge what the Giants can do offensively. I still think, despite that performance, Daniel Jones is a limited QB. I still think that you know, if you don't have a game script for him, he looks kind of lost. And so, I just feel like this Bengals defense that was projecting to look like a top 10 one to start the year will finally have an easier, and man, more manageable game to limit the big plays that they've been letting up over the past couple of weeks. Because the Giants are not, you know, the Chiefs. The Giants are not the Ravens. They, one week, try and come up with a game plan for one team, and then another week they try and come up with a game plan. They don't have one kind of overarching way to win a game. And so that's why I feel like Going forward, the Bengals' defense will see signs of improvement. I mean, not to the tune of too many points put up in fantasy. They only had four last week against the Bengals, and they gave up 38 points in that game. But this is a defense that, you know, over the past couple of weeks, much maligned, but will find its footing, I feel like. They don't have to find their footing that much either because the, the Bengals' offense looks very explosive right now. So, if all you ask of them is for them to be opportunistic and to get takeaways 
and to swing the field position battle. So that's really the, hall, the, the hallmarks of a decent at best defense. And not for nothing, this is a schedule that shows the fact that they can get back into this race in the AFC North. And so, against the Giants, who definitely can be a trap team, they proved to be that against Seattle. Can the Bengals' defense do just enough to get going? It doesn't have to be a pretty defensive performance from them. It doesn't have to be timely. As Tatlin says, Giants will keep this close at home. I think on the Giants' side of things, you kind of have to have a game script for Daniel Jones to have any kind of consistency in your offense, but I agree it will be a very close one. That being said, I just feel like the Bengals' defense will treat this game as a get-right game and say, hey, remember us? We're a unit to be reckoned with, and we're a unit that can get takeaways, play optimistic football, and most importantly, be the change in the game that we need our team for our team. And so that's why I feel like at this moment, the Bengals' defense will have a get-right game. Let me know what you keep, continue to think in the comments because all of these defenses that I picked could be terrible picks, you know? Especially the, the team like the Bengals. But they're in optimistic matchups, as always, and you never know how teams will try and attack them. Especially teams like the teams they're facing where, you know, they're just trying to find some kind of iota of consistency on the offensive side of the football. So it's going to be a game of chess in that regard. But let me know what you think. But coming up next, I'm going to give you a little bit of an injury update around the league with some uh, ensuing fantasy implications for week six of the NFL season. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs> 